So I'm here today with one of the original Ram contestants, uh, rider John Howard. He finished second in the original race. Uh, back then it was in 1982, the Great American Bike Race, if I'm correct. Is that, that was the name of it? That was the name of it, yes. And uh, so, Mr. Howard, why don't you tell me a little bit about how you came to, to be racing in this race in 1982? Uh, I had a uh, desire to, to push my li personal limits in several areas, and one was uh, I, I had a, a, a focus on Ironman initially, doing triathlons, and that was the first of three events that I wanted to do, and the second was the Race Across America, or Great American Bike Race, uh, and the third was to break the bicycle land speed record, 140 miles an hour. Um, those were three events that I put on the top of the list, uh, things I wanted to accomplish. Was there an actual list? I mean, did you actually write these things down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, and, and those were my goals, and the uh, Iron Man was, I was successful with that. I won, won the uh, Iron Man Triathlon World Championships in 81, the first year on the Big Island. And then the, the focus was uh, switched to ultra distance cycling. And Ram uh, at the time was just, I really didn't have a clue as to how to train for it. It was only one of the four of us, uh, that was Lon, who was well prepared. And, uh, because he had ridden, I mean, maybe John Marino was better prepared than I was, but my my concentration was just on going fast, and that and I missed the I missed the call on that one. But uh, I ended up second overall, and, and, and I realized at that time I need my sleep. This is not an event for me, and I don't think I ever want to do it again. And I never have. I, I never did it again. But I moved on to the a complete antithesis of that, and that's uh, to go faster in one mile than anybody had ever gone on the planet. So that was my, that was my concentration then. Uh, but I learned a lot about myself in Ram. What did you, what did you learn? I, well, first and foremost, I need sleep. I can't ride the way these other guys, they, they seem better able to spend time in the saddle, whereas I, I was on and off the bike constantly, and that isn't how you win the event. Uh, I, I realized that mental fortitude might have been my strong suit for, for some events, but when you, when you start talking about sitting in the saddle for that long, uh, it just didn't, it didn't, it didn't suit me. Uh, and I later came back and, and set the 24-hour endurance record. I think I'm limited to about one day in the saddle. About it. I was off the bike for 11 minutes in 24 hours and eventually set the world record at 539 miles. And after that, I don't think I've done much more than 100 miles ever since. That was in 85. As a Ram veteran, though, still, and as somebody who knows an awful lot about endurance cycling, what kind of advice would you have to riders that maybe are watching this and want to train for this event and eventually want to enter Ram? Well, Broadly speaking, you, you, you certainly need preparation. I've coached uh, a total of four winners in this event, and I always tell them the same thing, that, that, that the preparation really needs to go way beyond endurance. You need to understand that you need a little bit of leg speed in order to compete and, and at the highest level, and most of them are there to win. So uh, I have my athletes uh, preparing by, by riding around the clock. And I think you can't short sell the importance of riding after the sun goes down. And, and, and very few of them do that. And I think that's, uh, that's something that's really necessary to be able to sit on the bike for a full day. So um, the now race owner, Fred Bothling, and I actually shared a car ride up to uh, Los Angeles yesterday. And one of the things that we were just talking about in conversation is that uh, both you and John Marino, when you were uh, originally trying to organize this race, you had heard about Land Haldeman, but you weren't quite certain if he was strong enough and good enough to ride with you guys. Is that true? Well, to, to some degree, that might have been true at one point. But when he did his double crossing, 
I don't think there was any doubt in anybody's mind that this this was the guy to beat. I mean, I I thought so. I really wasn't that worried about um, Mike or John, but Haldeman was the, the the great unknown. And when he crossed the country twice, and I knew, you know, we we have a formidable competitor here for sure. I also watched the Great American Bike Race on YouTube. You can actually see it in 10 segments. They have it. And I do remember you somewhere in the California desert, I think they caught up with you. ABC Wide World of Sports caught up with you. And I believe, I'm paraphrasing here, but you said, Lon is a machine, I think, at that point. I mean, do you remember that moment and what was going through your mind? Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, it's, uh, it's clear that he's the guy to beat. And, and from the very beginning, he was riding faster than the rest of us. And I was pushing myself to stay with him. Uh, so he was extremely well prepared for that. And to, to beat him, I would have needed to um, stay on my bike a lot longer. And I just, I, I think I finished 10 or 11 hours behind him. Uh, and that was as close as I could get. So he was much better prepared for that particular event than I was. Now, 24 hours, that's another story. You know, I could go 24 hours and with almost no sleep at all uh, or, or downtime. But the race across America, it's, it, it suits other people better than it suits me. <laughs> I'm just thrilled to be a part of being one of the four founders of the event. At the end of the uh, Great American Bike Race, I think it was on the Brooklyn Bridge, uh, you, you kind of ditched the, the camera crew. I think you went for a sprint there as you got on the bridge. What was that about? Oh, just pent up frustration and not being able to get any closer. And, and I had... I, I believe I got fitter as the race, like any good stage rider, I got fitter as the, as the race progressed. And when we got to the George Washington Bridge, it just sort of blew my top and went as fast as I could. I don't know why, but there was a lot of energy still there that, uh, that needed to be expended. <laughs> All right, thank you very much.